tell you, the schedule on this job has really just been a challenge because it just feels like we keep going two steps forward, one step back, or even one step forward and two steps back with the weather. We get a, a good solid rain up here and we're out of business for a couple of days. Since the job site's so far away, I'm having to leave my equipment here every day, so I really can't do much of anything else other than hauling and maybe some tractor work because that's about all I have left at the shop. But that's okay. I mean, we're making progress on it. We're, we're getting things done now. Uh, yesterday, getting the French drain in was helpful. And, you know, I wanted to... I also wanted to just spend a little bit of time focusing on trying to make the customer's yard not look like a construction zone. So yesterday I loaded up about two loads of dirt in the single axle right out of the front yard and got it moved over to where we're stockpiling dirt. And it's not, the yard's not really graded per se, but at least now it can dry out real quick. And you know, if we're lucky, we might be able to work it this afternoon before we leave or I can definitely work on it tomorrow as long as we don't get any more rain. But there's a chance of rain in the forecast every day. So it's really strange weather for July, but here we are. Right now I have just a little bit more dirt from the original swale that we cut that needs to come out and just go to the, it just needs to go to the stockpile. And then the front yard and the area surrounding the front yard will be pretty much completely cleaned up and you know at least then when you come home and come up your driveway you're not being greeted with a constant reminder that there's dirt piles everywhere and the place just looks kind of messy so I think there's some value in that I've talked in videos before about trying to do things in a way that is the least messy possible I still think that there's value in that. Tear up as little as you can, fix it as you go, and that way, you know, people just don't feel like that their house has been torn apart. So we'll get this little pile of dirt cleaned up and in the truck and get that dumped, and then we're gonna go up and start working on the backyard drainage and bring it up to meet the original side yard swale that we put in when we first started the project. we'll go ahead and get this kid steer moved over there too because I think we're gonna end up needing it we'll just save us a trip we'll go ahead and put the bucket back on the skid steer and we'll move it over there where we're working because I'm pretty sure we're gonna need it actually I think I'm gonna go ahead and take the land plane over there too so what we'll do we're just gonna pick the bucket up, set it on the land plane. I can do this without destroying the GoPro in the process. I'm really hoping this audio turns out because most of the time on the skid steer I'm having to do voiceovers after the fact because it is so loud in here.
but maybe we'll find the answer sooner or later. All right, so step one on this is we've got this area right here where it's got a little bit of a rise about where the excavator's sitting. And so the water's kind of pooling up right here as it comes off the back of the house. So the first thing I wanna do is take the area from about where the excavator is to about 15 feet that way. And I wanna tail that grade down and get that little rise out because there's plenty of fall back behind it. Once we get that done, that should allow the water to just go ahead and drain on out. Then what we'll do is go start working on the side of the house to tie the rear drainage into the side drainage and just kind of feather them together. I'm actually gonna cheat a little bit with the eye dig. I guess it's not really cheat, but I'm just gonna grab a couple of reference points just to understand how much fall I have. So I'm gonna stretch the bucket out here and just get away from the laser catch. And I'm gonna go ahead and zero out the eye dig right where the bucket sets. And then I'm just gonna turn around and stretch out the bucket behind me. And it's telling me I have six, just over six inches of fall, six and a quarter, six and an eighth. So, uh, so there's plenty of fall and that's just in like 25 feet. So really all I have to do is just not go crazy pulling this rise out and just kind of follow. It's, it's real easy to see where the water is, is kind of getting stopped up because of the, of the patterns of the leaves on the ground. So I'm just going to get into position and, and dig this out a little bit. the dirt away from where I need it to drain just so that I'm not accidentally filling it back in when I come scoop it up with the skid steer. I really think this is just like either an old hedgerow or it's just where sediment has built up over the years and it just kind of needs to be cleaned up a little bit so it'll go back to a natural drain. So I'm really not going to try to do anything crazy with the eye dig on this. I'm really just using it to make sure that, that I'm falling a little bit. Again, I got plenty of fall here. I don't need to obsess over running some really tight grade so as long as I'm moving it downhill a little bit every time I should be fine if I you know I know I have fall for my original zero so I can just re-zero where I left off each time and then just keep stripping this back.
actually created this ditch. We had planned to put a road between the house and the swale to give them some good clean access to the backyard, but that ended up getting changed up and we're not gonna have that now. So instead what I'm gonna try to do is start stripping off some of this dirt and get it where water is falling away from the house. I just want to take the excess and start moving it into the backyard so it'll drain off of the slab. Okay, now what we want to do is start trying to tie in the drainage from this ditch into what's going on in the back. And so what we're going to do is we're going to increase the slope of this ditch enough to get it to come out back over here behind the excavator. Because once you get back here, the water's just naturally going to flow off into the backyard. So we really don't need a swale per se. We just need to catch any water coming off of this hill let it either go into the swale or go behind the house. All right, so I reshot all the grades and set the latest are up. And where my bucket is right now is um, six inches below where I want to come out on the other side. So if I stay on my 1% slope from here, it's about 55 feet back to where I want to come out, which will have me coming up just right at six inches. So when I get to where the back part of the yard kind of starts, I should be coming out of this with no ditch. And everything coming off the hill from the left will flow down into this swale and out down toward our low water crossing and French drain that we've already put in. And then everything behind that should just flow out of the backyard. So that's that's the plan we're gonna work from.
we got this swale extended out and now it kind of runs up until it hits this point here and then the rest of the water is running toward the back and then everything that enters the swale should be running down that way we started the beginnings of getting the backyard put in and then I tried to shave down going between those trees up there just to be able to get the water to drain all the way out um, and get rid of what I mean I guess it used to be a hedgerow or something I really don't know but trying to get that graded out where water will drain out of it uh, so that's about all we were able to get done today but it's a good uh, good day's work thanks for joining us on this episode of dirt and rocks we really appreciate you guys being here drop us a comment be sure to like subscribe and share and we'll see you on the next video